Hello and welcome to another one of the What Is series. Uh, in this particular example, I'm going to take a little bit of a step away from ArcSight products specifically and talk about what we call the attack lifecycle. So this is a Hewlett Packard Enterprise attack lifecycle presentation. What is the attack lifecycle? So the attack life cycle is a description of the stages and steps required, not always fixed, but as a set of stages that typically an attack against an organization is going to follow. And it gives you an indication of some of the areas we need to be focusing on, some of the specific ways that an attacker will attempt to get into an organization and the methodology that it will use and, and ultimately what do we need to do to start addressing some of these so it's good to use this as an understanding as a basic starting point of how we start identifying how an attacker is trying to breach into our organization so let's take a very uh, high level logical view. We, we have our organization, our ivory tower organization here, and an attacker wants to try and breach in and, and get access to application systems, environments, and data. So typically the first stage that they will embark on is, is reconnaissance. Doing some basic reconnaissance on the organization. Where is it? What's its location? Where is it physically located? What is its network addresses from the internet point of view? Who handles those? Is it through a service provider? Who is that service provider? Who manages the domain name structures? What are they doing in alternative locations? Do they have satellite offices in, say, less heavily policed and controlled areas? Exactly the kind of reconnaissance that you'd be needing to do to embark on an attack. Next, we need to then, from that reconnaissance, figure out the most effective way we can deliver something that's going to allow us to get access to that organization. Typically, as is proven by the statistics currently that we see, that's going to be through some sort of zero-day malware attack. That could be, in most cases, it's delivered via some sort of email, some sort of phishing attack, uh, some sort of attachment that's delivered to a, a key target individual, maybe. But again, it's that reconnaissance that's going to give us that information. Where do we need to be focusing on? Who has the kind of access rights? Who works within the organization that we should be focusing on? And what kind of, down to even what kind of antivirus or malware tool set do they have? And therefore, that will guide me around my delivery of the mechanism I want to deliver some malware to them. So in this case, we're going to use some email. We deliver that to them. What we're trying to do now is trying to convince somebody internally to, to run that, to, to trigger that malware, to use that exploit of that particular targeted malware. Now remember, it, in most cases, this is going to be very targeted. This is going to be very specific. And this is, in a lot of cases, it's going to be unique to this particular environment. That's what we're seeing today. And that's very much the situation. So it's going to install this uh, malware component, typically hidden to your malware tool set, typically hidden to the user who just thinks that there is a, a badly constructed spreadsheet or a PDF document that didn't quite open properly. And it's de deployed that exploit. The next stage is we need to do an iteration around a number of activities within the organization. And this is an iterative process. So it's going to go backwards and forwards on these activities. And first stage, above everything else at this point, is we need to establish control. We've delivered something internally to the organization, but that bit of malware needs to start and connect back out to the original attacker, connect back out to its command and control, so then they can start uh, steering and guiding it around what they want to try and achieve. So typically that's trying to communicate back out to the outside world. Next thing is we need to do some lateral reconnaissance. We did some reconnaissance from the outside. Now we're doing reconnaissance from the inside. Where can we start moving laterally within the organization? Maybe we've dropped into one part of the organization. Now we need to move to another part or another division or another network. We need to understand what that is. Start collecting that data. What are the network ranges? How are they routed? What are the security protocols that are in place? This can take a considerable time, don't get me wrong, but we're looking at doing this lateral reconnaissance now. Now we need to look at trying to expand our access. What else can we get, gain access to and how can we gain access to that? This is 
an extension of the uh, reconnaissance process where we're trying to identify uh, who and what and where can we get access to and then how can we try and elevate or escalate our activity and access rights within those applications environments files documents uh, and even networks so we need to expand we've we have our limited access for the moment we need to expand that and start being able to do some other things within that particular reconnaissance activity and then we need to start doing this lateral movement. How can we start jumping to different systems, uh, devices, applications, and servers? And in using that exploit malware component and pushing it to different systems so we can then start doing the same again. Moving on, doing that lateral reconnaissance, expanding our access by exploits and uh, increasing our access rights across applications and servers, and, and then continue to step through that organization. Typically, most organizations have separated and seg segmented networks, but this lateral movement starts to try and attempt to get around that by stepping between systems to allow us to do that. Then we need to establish persistence. Put the flag in the ground to say we're here and that's what we're doing. We need to make sure that we're embedded. And we can't be easily removed. Uh, and this is all about ensuring that malware is, is uh, hidden, uh, that the command and control is uh, not easy to identify in ordinary traffic. And it then just becomes all this activity. It's just business as usual. It's hard to see, it's hard to identify, and it's hard to try and eradicate. We're now persistent within the organization across a number of different areas, networks, environments, applications, and servers. And finally, well, and typically it's usually part of the same process, but we need to be ensuring that we're concealing what we're doing and ensuring that there is no way of identifying the activities and the systems and the processes that we've uh, uh, breached and, and uh, are working around. So it's about deleting logs. It's about ensuring that our data is carried within another reasonable and legitimate network traffic, for example. It's about ensuring that uh, rules to identify what we're looking, what we're doing, are removed, that firewalls are opened in key pot protocols and ports to make it hard for us to be blocked and stopped. It's about concealing what we're doing. So ultimately, we don't necessarily understand what those activities are because it's now hidden from our, our, our views, our radars effectively. So we're doing this lateral movement, we're doing the concealment, we're doing the establishing of persistence, we're still under command and control from the outside, we're expanding our access, and we're constantly doing all of this across our environment. Because ultimately, what we want to do is get access to this data, this information. This could be about the people, it could be about the social security numbers, it could be about the credit cards, it could be about anything at that point. And it's about using that iterative activities process to get access to that uh, treasure chest, gold mine, or whatever you want to call it. And once you've got hold of that, then start feeding that to the outside world and violating your, your confidentiality, your integrity, and your availability. Because ultimately, that's the objectives here. We want to steal some data, absolutely. But we also want to make it difficult for you to, for example, run your business and keep running your business have difficulty in proving that there is integrity on those transactions. For example, we can sneak through those little tiny bit transactions to so you don't know what's legitimate and what's real. Then ultimately, stealing the confidential information, credit cards, social security numbers, uh, privacy data, and so on. That's what we're looking to try and do, and that's what we're trying to exfiltrate out of the organization. And it then that data then goes via the command and control. We're sending that back out to where we're controlling all this from the outside and extracting that data. In most cases, this takes time. In most cases, this is an activity that could be anything from uh, two, three, even four years, uh, and even down to maybe even a few months. This is not typically a smash and grab process. This is something that takes time to iterate through those activities, to get around all the security controls to increase their access rights and carry out that lateral movement. And then ultimately to extract, in a lot of cases, gigabytes or even terabytes worth of data out of the organization without being detected, again, takes time as well. So 
that's the attack life cycle. There's a number of steps and stages, a number of aspects to this that we need to be deploying and using our security solutions. We probably got security solutions to address a lot of this, but what we need to do is understand the processes and how we can disrupt those processes, how we can make this harder and more difficult, how we can ensure that they can't move to the next stage or how they can't hide their activities when they're trying to uh, breach and, and access applications and systems systems within our organization. Reliance on simple firewalls, for example, is no longer good enough. Equally, reliance around malware when it's targeted to your particular environment based on reconnaissance is no longer good enough. We need to start understanding how we address this within the life cycle. So something like a security monitoring solution starts to address this because we can look at multiple indicators. A single activity doesn't necessarily tip us off as, an, as a specific attack. But a number of activities over time based on unusual access, unusual activities, or trying to jump between servers, for example, gives us a lot of indicators that we can start to use to identify this kind of activity. So it's bearing that in mind when we're doing our planning. That's when security monitoring becomes incredibly useful. Look at these indicators, look at these activities, and then base our monitoring around those. Then we have a much better attempt at trying to stop or block this kind of attack from being successful. That's when we can start getting ahead of the game and start solving some of these complex problems. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope that explains what we call the attack life cycle and how that's relevant with regards to security monitoring and gives you a little bit of a viewpoint into how uh, an attacker will try to gain access to and exfiltrate, exfiltrate data from a particular customer environment. Thank you very much for your time.